Timing. It's literally the biggest part of ARK that you won't be getting too far in the game without. And it just got a bit easier. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark. And with the TLC3 launch, an ever growing fan base of ARK players, I think it's time for a rundown on the taming mechanics you need to know. Whether noob or veteran, this video is for you. And if you know all the fundamental stuff, I'll leave a timestamp on where I introduce you to all of the new features. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, share around, and let's get to it. So first off, you want to trap your dinos, and it could be just a bowler for small to medium wilds, or you may need to consider building them a trap to lure them into. Here's two very basic traps depending on the scenario you're in. However, there are much cooler, cheaper ways to make traps. And I'll leave a link to the trap magician Captain Fat Dog in the description below. You'll probably need some torpor inflicting knockout items. And the basic form of these is narco berries that you can simply obtain from any bush out in the wild. But sadly inflicts a very small amount of torpor. So you might want to consider upgrading to narcotics, made in a mortar and pestle, or if you've got the mats, a chemistry bench, and you should if you could, because you'll make more of these, with narco berries and spoiled meat, inflicting about 40 torpor per consumption. But if you want to go pro with your torpor abilities, get some biotoxin, farmed from jellyfish in the sea, and inflicting a pretty mean amount of torpor per consumption. But before you can feed them anything, you're going to have to knock them out via a variety of ways. You can attempt to punch by hand, inflicting a small amount of torpor, but you're going to hurt yourself in the process and likely not succeed with anything bigger than a dodo. You can attempt a wooden club, which inflicts around the same amount of torpor, however scales with the quality of club that you're using. But your first course of action should be getting hold of a crossbow and tranquilizer arrows, inflicting a pretty mean 157 torpor that slowly rises and again will scale with the quality of your crossbow. You can step your game up to a long shot, and with tranquilizer darts, you're going to see that torpor fly up to 221, which again scales. But if you manage to load your long shot up with shocking tranquilizer darts, you're going to see a minimum of 442 torpor per hit. If you're going for a sea time, you might want to consider a harpoon and the relevant tranks for that, as you'll be hitting for just over 250 torpor but you can use crossbows underwater as well. You can keep an eye on that torpor game by throwing out a magnifying glass and seeing how close to knocking them out you are, because once you've maxed out their torpor, congratulations, you've knocked your wild out. But now comes the cool new mechanics, because there is a new menu within your hood called Taming Progress. And once you've knocked out any wild, it will reveal a box telling you what dino you've knocked out, what gender it is, its level, where you are with its timing effectiveness, and how many levels you're going to expect it to time out to, its unconscious meter, its timing affinity, its health and food. And within the same menu, you can select it to reveal to you where it is on the map. So no more lost knocked out times. And if you're attempting to tame many at once, you'll be able to see them all within this menu, their stats, and be able to track them all at the click of a button. And once tracked, you'll be able to see all of them wherever you are on the map. And if you highlight each icon, it will reveal to you the same information you found in the hood. And you can do that from literally anywhere on the map, making sure you never forget about that time you're knocked out, but it's going to take two hours to tame. Now, of course, to tame it, you're going to need to feed it its preferred food of choice, of which there are many which I'm not going to divulge into this video. And I'll leave a link in the description on the best place to find out that information. But there is a general rule of thumb to consider. There are six tiers of kibble, ranging from basic to extraordinary. But if your wild requires a kibble that's a lesser tier than the other, you will still get the best timing effectiveness you can. 
So, a Kano for instance, its preferred kibble is regular. However, I can feed it superior, exceptional or extraordinary and it will give it the same timing effectiveness that regular kibble would. And that works for any kibble requiring wild. And then once it starts eating its preferred food, you'll notice a white bar start filling up around the icon, as well of course as the timing affinity. And once tamed, you'll be notified by a nice green icon that you can also highlight to review the final timing effectiveness and untrack with your new tame in hand. Thanks all for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. What do you think of the new timing hood? It's definitely going to make life easier. And as I said, this is just a general overview of taming. There are many tips and tricks on how to do this much better than this video. If you've got any suggestions on what those are, drop them in the comments below. Plug away, I don't mind, crack on. My name's Ross Clark, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, peace out.